but we are discussing budget we are discussing budget expectations to uh, discuss that further rajat rajgadia ceo with institutional equities motilal oswal security now joins us rajat good morning and thank you for joining us rajat the favorite talking point right now is that what this budget can do to the, to fix the growth so do you think uh, 2016 union budget will be a game changing budget or just a run of uh, run of the mill budget well uh, we always expect the budget to be game changing right and somewhere i think the problem becomes in the way expectations get built up but nevertheless uh, i think there are few things which are very important uh, as a part of this budget first is uh, uh, what are the specific uh, uh, allocations we know that next year the revenue has to be very very judiciously spent uh, uh, and the dilemma for the government is whether they go for more capex related or f- go for more consumption related allocations it has to be a balance between the two second how do they address the entire bank recapitalization mode whether it would be just some percentage more growth over last year or they come with a number where they provide confidence that hey if rbi is cleaning up the books we are ready to provide significant capital and i think third which is which is again critical is that uh, what are the assumptions that goes behind the behind the revenue assumptions for example we know disinvestment always has been taken with some pinch of salt so these three four things are more critical uh, uh, besides that this budget session also assumes importance because in the second leg of the budget session we should hopefully see some positive resolution on on gst but yes uh, just coming back to this to this monday uh, uh, this is a time when people are looking forward to the government for them to do at least the first big spending for 2017 fi 17 uh and secondly how do they address this entire bank recapitalization problem so rajat let's address both those pointers in case government decides to go easy on expenditure and uh, if they loosen the fiscal a bit that may be a sentimental booster rajat but frankly government uh, capex as percentage of gdp even on an a positive even on the most optimistic scenario would be 2% which means it's not going to fix the investment cycle or really kick start the uh, you know mend the private sector capex so irrespective of what government targets in terms of fiscal uh, the expenditure can do pressures little to change things well uh, nikunj if you uh, uh, of course one one budget cannot fix up cannot fix all the problems which exist into the system but i think uh, parallelly if you look at many sectors of the economy you are you are seeing things just getting a little little better in in specific spaces uh, while today uh, we are all talking about commodities in a meltdown you see many of the commodities which have bounced up 15 to 25% from their lows of the last 3 months we are just into the initial part of the year banks have started cleaning up their books and provided they get adequate capital this year at least if the baggage of the bad loans will be a will be a past a talking point in the later part of this year we can start seeing lending opportunities getting created and the third is how 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 do you kick start the demand so last year's budget which is fi 16 essentially focused on public capex this year we are expecting that there will be components of consumption boost also which will come so there is no one big magic formula which can just change this entire environment of low growth to a high growth but i think you have to just keep on doing things and hope that in totality when they add up they start pushing up your aggregate growth rates in the near term raja just before we hit the opening bell on monday what's the word out should one be absolutely light keep the powder dry up until the budget and more such conclusive announcements from the budget uh, from the government considering the kind of global turmoil that we are in and the fact that we've crashed so much from the previous high for the market well uh, that that's a that's a very fair question i think two days after the budget and two days before the budget is all for traders right uh, uh with, outside the horizon of these five days of tr- of trading investors should find lot of comfort in this markets at this point of time 
you rightly mentioned today we are down more than 20 percent from the highs of last year and many of the stocks are down by 30 percent plus uh, 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 this is a this is this market is into a cyclical uh, cyclical this market is at a cyclical low right now right globally uh, 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 as you can see uh, things have turned just little better over the course of last two weeks but because in india you have a big event like budget ahead people are a lot more cautious to make any new positions so i think two days before the budget and two days after the budget you see a lot of phobia created around this event after that things come back to earnings things come back to flows right right now both are not looking so great and that is why the market is at 7200 point in fact rajat <laughs> Our research team just dug out that data as well. A week before, a week after, the budget movements haven't been very staggering, quite frankly. So it actually has turned out to be a non-event of sorts from a market perspective the last three or four years. But you know, I was looking at your India strategy report as well. Uh, you mentioned about how return, you know, markets return to earnings over a period of time. Um, if, if there was one space that, you know, to an extent performed, uh, aside of IT, it was pharma. You, you are mentioning that Sun Pharma was a bit of a surprise for you. The commentary from Lupin wasn't that bad. And now with the inclusion of Aurobindo in the Nifty, you will have major index representation from the Pharma Pack uh, on the index as well. What is your stance on the space at large? Well, I've always uh, uh, believed that Pharma is never to be looked as a top-down story. Every stock is unique in its own aspect. Uh, this is not a sector where the sector per se uh, does well for every every company in the league like you have in banks or like you have in IT. In pharma you have to pick up the right model. For example, last year was a difficult year, 2015, where many of these pharma majors like Sun Lupin had meaningful corrections from their highs either because of some growth issues or US FDA issues. But I think as you see some of these things getting sorted, some of the company-specific problems or company-specific consolidations like in case of Sun getting over, you will start seeing growth rate coming back. But more importantly, I don't think that in pharma, the, the big names are going to deliver anywhere closer to the returns that they delivered in the last 10 years. This is a sector where you will have to keep on finding from the mid-cap space on which are the names which are going to grow many fold. The big ones have done their job from here. The returns in them will be a lot more calibrated. But there are many, many mid-cap names in pharma which one has to bet upon for them to move up further on the value radar. Rajat, we've definitely seen a very sharp adjustment in large and small cap uh, space. You know, in the month of Jan, this market was priced to perfection and there were very few names which offered value. But the situation has reversed now. Now, there are a lot of stocks which have corrected, not because they deserve to correct, largely because of adjustment and redemption. So, where is value in this market? And if someone has to construct a portfolio, let's say for next uh, two or three years, where should one be picking spots? Well, Nikuj, I think uh, uh, this market uh, definitely uh, is creating a lot of value in specific sectors. For example, I think... HDFC Bank at 15 times earnings is now becoming a value for the kind of growth that they offer, right? Uh, a, 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 a bank which has which which seems to have operated in a completely different country when you see problems like NPS all over the all over the space uh, uh, is delivering you 20% plus earnings growth and now trades at just at about 15, 16 p is something which is which is quite good. On the other hand. If you look at something like an ICICI bank, where uh, 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 based on based on the way you want to look at it, we think it is now coming closer to the book. And this time, the uh, uh, the quality of the book or the composition of the book is a lot better than what it has been in the past. Whenever the stock has corrected, so you get value in in a different way in ICICI bank compared to an HDFC bank. Similarly, autos, which I was hearing uh, 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 one of you were just talking about getting a significant representation. I think uh, uh, this cycle in India 2015 to 2019 20 will belong to autos. You have you will see a fairly large representation of autos happening in all the benchmarks. 
this year we have in, we have seen inclusions of names like Bosch, iShare, etc. This is one sector where you can get almost 15-20 companies with possible market caps of 40-50 thousand crores plus. This almost reminds me like a, a, a quasi to banking where at one point of time you had 15 stocks in banking and NBFCs which had market caps of almost 30-40 thousand crores plus. I think autos is the next such space and you have many stocks which have anyways done well in terms of growth over the last two, three years when the domestic economy is yet to pick up. As the economy picks up over the course of next two, three years, this sector will definitely become even more, even more interesting. So I think there are multiple pockets of investment opportunities that you can see into the market. Uh, pick on companies which have focused on getting better over the last two, three years. Of course, all of them have seen some impact here and there because of the way the environment has played out but whoever has been uh, least damaged will also emerge as the best idea for one to bet upon from here well look at the market we are now succumbing to almost a one percent loss 7177 is where we're currently at for the index and the middle and the small cap indices as well about a half a percent crack coming in there 180 point shave off for the sensex 2 7176 is where the nifty is currently but rajat what is your sense about where the synchronized global weakness could take us and how much more downside could we be staring at for the market? Another 5 to 10 odd percent? I mean, what could be the extent of the damage? Well, um, if you look at India, uh, it, is, it has been one of the large overweights in emerging markets. If you look at the valuations, India trades at the top end of the premium band. And if you look at the earnings downgrades over the course of last 10 to 12 months, uh, the intensity has been the highest. So when you put these three things in context, uh, which is highest overweight in EM, uh, highest valuations and highest earnings downgrade, right? I think you get an answer to why you are seeing almost a hundred million dollar plus kind of an FI selling happening every day, right? Even on the days when you see the region seeing marginal inflows, India is still seeing uh, outflow of almost to the tune of 500 to 700 crores. I think the, the answer to your question is till the time you don't see three days of three plus days of net FI buying, right? Uh, you will have to respect that that redemption trend, which is very, very strong against India right now. This partly has been offset by the kind of domestic flows, but I think uh, 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 if globally things don't improve any time in the next couple of months, the intensity of outflow can only pick up further pace as far as India is concerned. So one just has to be cognizant that uh, globally outflows from emerging markets can lead to bigger outflows and higher impact on India in the short term. What's the strategy? I mean, have you been buying anything in this recent correction or are you just completely staying away, sitting on cash right now? Rajat, the question was for you. Sorry? Yeah, I was just wanting to know, so what's the investment strategy right now? Are you just sitting on cash, completely staring clear of the market, or have you been a buyer in the recent fall? Well, I think uh, uh, you, you need to be a buyer in this fall because from an investor, you you wait for such times where you can make a portfolio which delivers you strong returns. When we talk about equities delivering 15-16% compounded returns over a period of time, only when you buy in times like this, you get a 25-30% return from year, which when you average out for the loss of the last one year, makes your average at about 15%. So as an investor, this is the time when you should look to buy equities. As I mentioned, today you have many of the high quality companies which are trading at their low valuations with growth outlook next three years better than the last three years. And the valuation today at the low point of the last three years. I don't think you would have got that opportunity 
if we wouldn't have been surrounded by so many concerns both globally and locally and uh, from an investor the best time to invest is when you have so many concerns that you get your dream stocks at the valuations what we are trading today we get a closing comment from you a stock which you track as a house indigo what's gone wrong with indigo uh, is it only concerns about q2 or uh, the uh, the so called uh, you know uh, the so called environment is no longer conducive for indigo now well i think uh, uh, the environment uh, still remains quite conducive because if you look at the traffic growth that remains very very strong for the latest monthly numbers also oil prices are at their lows the load factors for the industry have remained good i think it's a more of a question of readjustment of expectations q2 numbers that they reported just did not go down well with investors at all and the stock had to bear the brunt of 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 that of that disappointment you know the first two months of the listing the stock went through over excitement the last one 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 and a half month i think now you are just seeing that extreme playing out on the other way i would think that the core thesis of uh, uh you know 15 20% traffic growth low oil prices high load factors and resulting into strong uh, uh profit and cash flows remain uh today the excitement of the first two months have just given way to an over disappointment in the last one month and the prices have corrected accordingly so from our point of view these prices of about 800 which is almost the low of the stock since the listing provides good opportunity for investors who believe in this story for them to bet further from here rajat thanks so much for taking the time out and joining us and giving us this perspective today that's the view from rajat rajgarya of motilal oswal in fact speaking of motilal oswal uh, Ramdev Agarwal a joint md of MOFSL